I was reading a book one time. I read a lot. And I was reading this book, and this was, it was meant for youth pastors. And they said, put the book down right now. And I never understood. They said, put the book down and then do this. If you had put the book down, you wouldn't know what you're supposed to do, right? But it said, put the book down and call 10 students that has not been to your group in a few weeks that used to be a regular. And the books that we promise, at least seven of them will come back. I did this two times. One time, eight of those students came back, and one time, nine of the students that I called came back. Do you know why they came back? Because I spent a whopping 20 seconds on the phone with them, personally inviting them to come. So then I thought, wow, is it because I was the pastor? And so I started to do that with our youth leaders. Same result, eight or nine out of 10 would come back because somebody took the time to make a 20 or 30 second phone call to reach out to them just to say that I love you. Hey, I'm there for you. You know, and so I'm asking you this, how many people did you call and invite for tonight? How many people did you Facebook? How many people did you just say, hey, man, I just want you to know that I love you. I just want you to know that, you know, God's got something good for us and good things are happening at the connection. Hey, come hang out with us. Get in the presence of God. I know you're not living for the Lord. I promise you this. Nobody's going to judge you. Or hopefully nobody judges anybody here. You know, that's what the family's all about. You know, a lot of times, have you ever noticed that in, in a family, a physical family, that one, there's one person in the family that's always causing problems, that they're always causing pain and anguish in the family. What does all the healthy members do? They flock to that one. That's what we're going to be about in this place right here. We're going to start flocking to people that need us, people that need something in life. We're going to flock to them. And this is, this is a lie of the enemy right here. This is this in Romans eleven twenty nine. 29. It says, for God's gift and his calling are irrevocable. Irrevocable means this, not to be revoked or recalled, unable to be repealed or annulled, unalterable. God has put gifts and abilities inside of you. But so many people don't think that you can offer in those gifts because you've sinned or something. And I want you to grab this condemnation and conviction before you sin or mess up you have conviction come upon you or after you, you mess up you have this conviction when you pray and you ask the Lord to forgive you he forgives you but the problem is condemnation sets in on a lot of people and you cannot forgive yourself if you will forgive yourself because God has already forgiven you you're going to keep going pray and keep going but the thing is so many people say this well I've sinned I've messed up you don't know how bad I was I said that's right how bad you were you're not anymore and, and you've got that gift, that ability, that talent laying dormant in your life. When that talent comes up and you start to use that talent, there are so many people in your life that are waiting on you to step up and be the man or woman of God that he's called you to be. Do you believe that? I hope so. Man, I look at your generation. It's amazing. Scripture I read to start everything off with is 1 Peter 4 and 10. As each one of us has received a gift, minister it to one another as a good steward of the manifold grace of God it's like this when you was like eight years old acting crazy on December 25th and all these presents up around the tree how many of you honestly sat there and went man I love that present that thing is huge and just looked at it and it had your name on it and you walked away you came back in January 3rd look at that present again man that thing's big one of us inside of it you came back July 4th and looked at that present Lord no you went in there and just ripped into that thing and wanted to see the gifts that you had it's the same way with God He's got all these gifts and abilities inside of you. And here's the thing. I see them. Do you see them? When you look at yourself in the mirror, what do you see? This is so funny. I love doing this with young guys. I say, tell me how you see yourself. And they tell me, and I'm thinking, man, you're crazy. I'm talking about you. And they're like, yeah, well, how do you see me? And I see them in a completely different light. Because I don't see where you're at. I see where you're going. I see the abilities inside of you. And you have to start thinking better about yourself because you're one of God's children. Don't think anything prideful about yourself. But you guys start thinking the way God thinks. See, in Romans 12, 6 and 8, it says this. We have different gifts according to the grace given to us. If a man's gift is prophecy, you know, let him prophesy some portion. If it is serving, let him serve. If it's to teach, let him teach. If it's to encourage, let him encourage. You know, and that's it. And if he has money, let him give generously. If your ability is to take down the chairs, take them down. If it's to put up pipe and drape, put them up. If it's to greet doors on Thursday night, greet doors. Whatever your gift is, do it. Start activating it. You know, come up to me and say, hey, what can I do to help? I'm on, and this is what I ask you. When we hire people with Connection, when we, we hire interns, I hate giving interns a list about what, what, what do you want to do. People will come in and say, what do you want me to do? I say, what do you want to do? You're the boss. I know, but what do you want to do? What are your gifts and abilities? Because I can give people something to do, and they're going to do it. 
but if they walk out in their gifts and they get to do something they like, that's a side note for your future. If you don't find out what God wants you to do, you're going to go to a job fair when you're 29 and a half years old and say, just give me a job. I'll do anything for the next 30 years till I retire. I'll do whatever y'all got for me. Boy, that's exciting. Or you can get along with the Lord and say, God, what do you want me to do? And when the Lord puts something inside of your heart, you get excited about it. Then you go to college to make yourself a professional in that field. Larry Jones, one of our elders, says this, whatever field you go in in life, be a professional in it. Be the best. Three-time house builder of the year back there, Robert Trummel. He went into the house building business, three-time builder of the year. You know, whatever you're going to do, do it with all of your heart. Do it with uh, everything that the Lord has given you. Because I promise you this, when I was 20 years old, when I was your age, I said, man, I don't want somebody to tell me what I'm going to do for the rest of my life at a factory or someplace that I don't like. I want to do something I like. And the Lord put people on my heart. And the Lord just put a, a love and a desire to study his word and to speak and to orate and, and to preach and disciple and to train. And I'm like, this is great. And then when I got called into the ministry, I said, I have no idea what I'm doing, but I submitted myself to a great church and to a man of God, and I've been rolling ever since. You know, God's going to call different people in here to different things. And when you hit that vein that you absolutely love, I've got friends that love supplements and nutrition, and that's what they do, and they love it. I've got people that like building things, and I've got a friend that he's a carpenter, and he says, I love carpentry. It is what gets me going. I like getting something that's nothing and making it and selling it and being happy and and I'm like, okay, good. I don't like that, but you do. He said, well, I don't like preaching. I said, well, I'll keep my job and you keep yours. 